Hello, everybody, and a very, very warm welcome to this uh, super exciting session. Um, it's it's going to be amazing, actually. It's a little departure from our normal format, but my goodness, this is such a popular topic. Um, I was amazed at the numbers of people that we've actually got signed up uh, for this session today on growing mm -hmm. ourselves on YouTube. It's not an easy thing to do. Um, and some people do it terribly well and they seem to just kind of just just manage to float into it and, and make some amazing strides. And other people just struggle and struggle and struggle for a, a, a quite a long time. Um, and the truth of the matter is there's a knack to it. it you know, it's, it's not rocket science. It's not some arcane art, uh, but there is a knack to it. And there is a knack to doing it well and actually growing. Um, and so what we're going to do today is I'm joined obviously by our wonderful Roberta Macmillan, who is here theoretically on her day off, but um, as you know, Roberta moderates uh, these groups for us. And um, she'll also be letting people into the group as well. And also if you've got any questions, you can direct them to me or to Roberta in the chat box. And uh, if you don't know where the chat box is by now, where have you been? <laughs> where have you been on Zoom? If you've not been on Zoom in the last year, then I don't know what's going on. As you know, the chat box is at the bottom there. So you just click on the little uh, chat icon and it'll bring your chat box up probably at the side. Um, a very good afternoon to everybody. I see people put to, you know, typing in the chat box already, which is lovely. So um, yeah, so we're going to be talking about uh, the dark arts of YouTube today. And uh, I'm joined by by uh, an absolutely incredible lady uh, who has been a CMA member since I think it's last summer. Is that right, Julie? Yeah, that's Julie? correct. Yes. Right. Okay. So this is Julie Higgins, everybody. Um, mm. Absolutely lovely lady. Um, <laughs> And she reached out to the she reached out to my colleagues uh, with some lovely videos and said, "I think you said, Julie, if I've got this right, can I put these on my CMA page? Right. Yes, on, on the CMA. That's it. On, on the on the CMA website. You know how you all have your own page." on the CMA website to do with as you will. So I thought, well, okay, I'll, I'll have a quick look at these videos. And I was absolutely blown away by the quality of Julie's videos. And I just thought, oh my goodness, um, these are just exceptional. And so I contacted Julie and we had a bit of a chat and we said, actually, why don't we do a really nice instructional video for people so that we can, and I thought it'd be useful for Julie um, to have a chat with you because Julie's very much at the beginning of her journey on, on YouTube. Um, and I've been on YouTube for some years and my channel, my personal brand channel is growing very, very quickly. So, uh, you know, so we're kind so, so because I've been at it for some years, uh, you know, I've probably forgotten the questions that people might ask or might wonder about at the beginning of the journey. So that's, that's sort of why we're doing this almost in a two-parter. So first of all, what we'll do today is I'll be speaking and introducing Julie and speaking with Julie and, and so on. And then then what I'll do is I'll walk you through my, through my top 13, lucky 13. Um, that's just how it worked out. There's no, there's no sort of, you know, magic or significance to the number of tips that I'm sharing with you today. It just happens to be that there are really 13 tips that you really, really need to get under your belt. Um, so, okay. So, so without further ado, I just want to say in the chat, I've already put Julie's website, her Facebook, her Instagram and her YouTube they are all worth checking out, obviously because she's a fabulous practitioner, which goes without saying, but also because of the way she's handled her branding. Um, her, she's brand cohesive right across all of her social media channels. Look at mine as well. So look at my private Facebook uh, so, so my, 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 my business page, that is, so it's just Janie Goddard, the business page, not the normal feed. Um, then look at my Instagram and look at my uh, YouTube channel and any of the other socials. In fact, do I do any? No, that's it. I think Instagram, YouTube and Facebook. Yes, I only do those. And obviously my newsletter as well. I don't know if you get my newsletter, which comes out on Friday. Um, and look at my website, jamiegoddard.com, because you'll see the way, again, that branding is carried across all of the different platforms, which makes it instantly recognisable. So people already have an expectation of what they're going to get when they come to visit you. 
So that's tip, that's sort of tip number one. So Julie, so if you scroll right up to the top of the chat, you'll see all of Julie's details there. So uh, welcome, Julie. It's absolutely fantastic to have you. Um, Thank you. <laughs> would you start by perhaps telling everybody a little bit about your background and, you know, sort of what you, you know, what your background is and how you came to being involved in complementary medicine? Yeah, sure. Um, so historically, I'm a musician. Uh, but what I didn't realize before was that music in itself is healing. Um, and I remember all throughout my 20s, well, even before from the age of 14, um, people used to come up to me at the bus stop and start telling me their life story. And I'd be like, go away. I'm a kid. Um, so, yeah, the healing energy, I guess, was always there. Um, but music, as we know, the industry is quite evil and precarious. Um, so my various tribulations on that path um, just threw me basically more into the spiritual world, um, just as a means to help myself, I guess, at the time. Um, so that was probably 20 years ago, um, the beginning of my spiritual journey. Um, but I guess there was a poignant moment around 13 years ago when um, life decided to deliver a few surprising events, um, which propelled me further down a spiritual path. Um, so yeah, as a result of that, I started to learn to do things in order to help myself. Um, a few people mentioned that I had healing energy. I knew that I needed to study something, but I wasn't quite sure um, in what area. Um, but then I decided it should be healing. Um, so in 2015, I did my healing course with the School of Intuition and Healing. Um, qualified in 2017, but at the time I was still working because obviously when you're a musician, you don't make any money, so you always have a job. Um, so I was still working, um, but my day job ended a year ago. So I thought, okay, well, maybe now's the time to get everything off the ground and up and running. Um, but what I found and what I knew anyway was that people don't understand healing. They don't get it. They don't know what it is, and they're quite afraid of it. Um, so I thought that I would, um, in order to counteract that, I'd probably need to get some more therapies under my belt just as a means to entice clients in. Um, so long story short, I ended up doing aromatherapy massage, um, which was supposed to be a fast track course, but because of the pandemic, um, we've only just finished that a month ago. Um, so now that's out the way, I'm ready to go full throttle and get everything off the ground. Fantastic. Yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much. So what I was wondering was, um, can you tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, uh, when, when, when we sort of first jumped on, on the call, I was yeah. talking to you about how wonderfully cohesive your brand is, you know, mm. the different platforms. First of all, how did you identify which social platforms you wanted to be on? Because this is a really crucial issue. Yeah. Social media is very time consuming and very draining, potentially. So mm -hmm. how did you choose where you wanted to be? Uh, well, believe it or not, I hate social media. Um, so there hasn't been much going on with my music for several years now. So I probably haven't, yeah, haven't really engaged with social media a great deal. So, not, you know, not even personally. Um, I know, well, it's common knowledge that Instagram, I guess, is the main animal um, but also, I think Facebook, maybe for the older market, mid to older market. So Facebook and Instagram are the two staples. Um, but because I do music, I'm also aware of the power of YouTube. Um, and I think maybe a lot of people are unaware that YouTube is actually the second largest search engine in the world. So if you have a business, basically, you need to be on it and selling your product. Exactly. End yeah. of story. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. right. The, the reason I love YouTube um, as a marketing device is because it gives you a shop window, you know, because of the field that we work in uh, as practitioners and people running training schools and so on, um, a lot of buying decisions. So when I say buying decisions, mm. what I'm talking about is somebody picking up the phone to make an appointment with you or somebody booking onto your course or what have you, that's a buying decision. Uh, a lot of those buying decisions are made when people look at what you're doing and decide they can they know, like, and trust you. And one of the mm -hmm. best ways of, of 
establishing who you are and your identity is by by putting yourself out there on on YouTube so that people can actually sort of get a look at you they can hear you they can see you know what what it is that you're putting across mm. and I think that really is tremendously helpful so so Julie coming back to the the topic of the day which is yeah. YouTube you are right it is the the second biggest search engine and, and you're right not many people actually realize yeah. just how powerful this animal is but the interesting thing about it I think is that we've never lived in so, in an era up till now that has that's been that gives us as much potential um, I suppose, uh, ability to promote ourselves actually sure. for free as, as social media does, but, but yes. in particular. So, so when you started off, you know, how, how did you get started on YouTube? And, um, um, you know, what, t- tell me a little bit about that journey. Okay, so I guess my mistake is that I, I launched all three social media at once. Um, so when I qualified, I did my website straight away. I always did that, but because I wasn't intending on, you know, practicing, um, full time at that stage, I didn't have social media. Um, so basically three weeks ago, I launched everything on the same day and I sent out all of my links to everybody. And what I found is that a lot of people were probably engaging with Instagram and Facebook and they're ignoring YouTube. So um, that's the one that I'm really struggling with at the moment is YouTube. So on Facebook, there's various groups um, that I've joined. There's a couple that are really good um, for women in business. And by these groups, you know, you can easily get, um, say, like around 200 followers or likes in a day or two days. But there's absolutely nothing to try and grow your YouTube page or YouTube channel. Um, There are some Facebook groups um, to try and grow your YouTube channel, but unfortunately it's just full of kids, you know, gamers or just, you know, young girls doing hair and makeup. Um, And basically the strategy that they use is sub for subs. Um, So yeah, you can join one of these groups and create an ad and easily get maybe a thousand subscriptions in a day, but then these people aren't going to engage with the channel. They're not going to comment. They're not going to like, and they're not going to watch it. So it's futile in making an ad on one of those Facebook groups. Um, So basically I've identified in the last three weeks that there's just a huge gap in the market for when, well, basically just to try and promote YouTube um, for credible businesses. So yeah, it's a stumbling block. It, it really is. Yeah, yeah. it's very, it is tricky. Um, yeah. You're quite right. Um, so in case, in case any of the viewers don't know about sub for sub, it is a bit of a sort of a, it's a bit of a tacky kind of um, hack in a way. It, mm-hmm. Unfortunately, it's a hack that doesn't work because the way that, that social media platforms operate and the way that they uh, prioritize what they're going to, the content they're going to put in front of the audience is by engagement. So uh, Mm. if if they see that a video, for example, if it's YouTube or if it's Instagram, although of course you can do video on Instagram, but if it's an Instagram post that's getting lots of people liking it, commenting on it, and same for YouTube, likes, comments, subscribes. If there's activity going on a post, then it flags up to the algorithm that that is a, it's a popular thing and it's worth shunting it up the 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 rankings so that Mm. it's actually seen which is is a little unfair really in a way because it just means that the popular stuff just keeps getting shown and shown and shown which in a way I suppose is good because it's popular for a reason but uh, on the other hand it does mean that there is a lot of really good content out there that Mm. just you know that people aren't really um aren't really maximizing with with tagging and various other things that we're going to come on to a little bit later uh so it does make life very very difficult so so um julie what are the steps that you've taken so far to actually grow your youtube channel um where are you at with that at the moment okay um so well the problems that i've encountered um got a list (laughs) um so in general youtube doesn't promote your videos basically you have to drive engagement towards you um and as well it's not socially interactive in the way that um facebook is and also with instagram 
Um, one thing that I found is that I have more engagement on Instagram um, because I've got like 20 spinning plates at the moment. I haven't had a chance to sit down and delve into everything properly, um, but just already I can see that people are engaging more on Instagram. Um, what's not good is that you can't cross market between YouTube and Instagram, i.e. you can't share the link because Instagram doesn't allow for that, which is very annoying. So on Instagram, you have to re-upload your video. Um, so that's been a huge stumbling block as well. Um, but basically there is more engagement on Instagram um, to try and counteract the problems that I've had. Um, I thought, okay, maybe if I try to advertise one of the videos, so I tried to set that up only for the next day for the video to be disapproved, I guess, because it's health-based. So I can't advertise it. Um, I've been trying to leave my footprint in as many places as possible in order to try and drive traffic, you know, back to YouTube, back to the videos. Um, I read somewhere that places like, is it Kiora? Is that how you pronounce it? Kiora? Oh, yes. Yeah, Quora and Reddit are good. So um, I went on there actually on Monday and created a profile um, and basically just start answering people's questions. So if someone has a question about healing, et cetera, just jump on their answer, but then put your video as well. Um, so hopefully at some stage that will filter back. Um, I've also been contacting online wellbeing magazines just to see if it's something of use for them um, that their readers might be interested in. Um, and also collaborations. Um, not quite sure how I ended up with these people, um, but I found um, a platform called um, Remote Rehab. I um, can't remember how I ended up there, but um, I joined their platform. So I've been asked to collaborate with one of the leaders off there and she wants to um, do some videos as well. So Remote Rehab is a community for occupational therapists and physios and people that do, you know, body work, that kind of thing. Um, so um, Caro, the lady who contacted me, um, she's a healer, but she's not, tr she's not trained, um, but she has healing energy. And she says that lots of the physios, um, they always say that they can feel energy as well. So she'd like to start doing some videos about that. So I've been asked to do a collaboration and um, hopefully another collaboration with um, a couple of other people as well. So that's how I've tried to counteract it so far. So I'm still waiting for some responses to come back in. Yeah, that's fantastic. Are you doing anything to sort of monitor? Um, so what gives you the most bang for your buck as far as your energies are concerned on social media? This is something mm -hmm. to bring up for everybody, just to bring yeah. up for everybody, because um, it's really crucial that you that you audit what you're doing because yes. if you don't audit what you're doing uh what will happen is that you're sort of fiddling around here fiddling around there yeah up randomly there and there and so on and you'll scatter yourself you'll scatter your energies and too you thin yeah oh will you that's right so are you doing any sort of audit julie at all just um do, 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 do. It, well instagram is definitely working so next week i'll dedicate more time on that just to get my numbers up um so as I mentioned, I know um, I haven't been worried about Instagram nor Facebook because I know that in a couple of days, um, if need be, I can just create a post in one of these groups that I've mentioned. And within a day or two, I can be maybe 100 or 200 um, followers up. So I'm not worried about those platforms. Um, but definitely Instagram, there is quite a lot of engagement there. Also with the, the types of videos that I've made, um, I found that on Instagram, other healers like it and they've um, sent them out to their clients because it basically explains um, as an example what distant healing is. So, yeah, so other therapists have liked it as well. That's fantastic. So you're leveraging the power of, of yeah. That's actually wonderful because I think, and I think it's something that as practitioners we should all do a lot more of. Um, uh, you know, cross promotions. Um, yeah. You know, le leveraging each other's uh, lists and so on. This mm. is actually 
concept behind things like running uh, summits and, and that sort of thing, because uh, they can, you know, they can be very, very powerful ways of actually reaching out to audiences that you might not have been in front of previously. Yes. Now, obviously, uh, you know, it, it, it depends really on, on whether you are running a practice that relies purely and simply on local geographical, mm. uh, you know, customers, clients, patients, or what have you, or whether you're able to actually take an element of what you do online. Now, everybody listening, as you know, I'm always banging on about <laughs> pivoting to go online. We've pivoted so much that we're completely dizzy now. But the point <laughs> being, um, in all seriousness, I would love to see everybody getting some sort of element of what you do online. Um, whether it, whether you're creating meditation uh, recordings or whether you're creating online appointments or whether you're creating ebooks or whatever it is, because the truth of the matter is we don't know how long lockdowns going to continue. We simply don't yeah. know what the future holds. So please, please, everybody, if there's any chance of taking things online, you know, please do so. Mm. And this is also kind of a little bit about you know, of course, what we're talking about today. You know, of course, YouTube being online. So, um, Julie, it sounds as though you're doing an absolutely fantastic job mm. can you say a little bit you've mentioned about some of the groups that you'll post in and then get more followers can you say more about the types of groups that other practitioners could possibly look at so that they can maybe leverage some of, of this sort of power yeah sure um well i can give you i can send you the names after i'd have to look what they are but i can send you the names of them after um but two of them are well women in business sorry guys um but there are obviously other facebook groups for small businesses um but the women's ones um seem quite good they're quite genuine so people do follow for follow and they do it you know respectfully so they don't unfollow you again so they're quite good um, I'm also in a few holistic Facebook groups as well, but I find that there isn't the same camaraderie, uh, maybe because they're smaller. Um, but um, for example, there's one that I'm in and when the leader, whenever she creates a post for people to, you know, create an Instagram follow train, people aren't engaging, um, which is a bit unfortunate, but definitely in the two women in business ones, um, they're always very busy. And one of them, I think, has got about 10,000 members. So that's a good one. Yeah, so that'll be a really active group. And so, yeah. the, so the, the tactic that's working there is a uh, sort of, a, you know, a follow, a follow chain. Is that Yes. Right? Yeah. And there's a new one, an offshoot that someone's done this week, which is actually better. Um, so what they sometimes do as well, just to try and keep it orderly, is create a schedule. So, for example, maybe at midday, there'll be a Facebook follow chain. And then at four o'clock, there might be an Instagram follow chain. Um, maybe at six o'clock, it's a chance to, you know, promote your, if you have something that you want to promote like a product. So sometimes they keep it orderly like that. Um, what else was I going to say? Um, just you reminding me of something. I just wanted to say as well um, about YouTube, very importantly, um, it's another way to create um, another revenue stream. Um, so although I knew that I wanted to make the videos as of March last year, by the time I got around to doing it, it was kind of like October, November when I started. Um, but I can't remember how or why, but everything's divinely led. And I ended up watching a load of tarot videos in September. And because of that, basically that's where I then got my YouTube bus business model from basically. Um, so with all of the tarot readers, um, what they do is, well, you can ask for donations, um, which I know sound, seems a bit weird because um, it feels like it's begging, but it's not. So across YouTube, it's just the standard etiquette basically um, for people to donate and people do donate. Um, also linked to YouTube, um, you can have a Patreon account, which is a monthly membership. So depending on what it is you what it is that you do or what it is you can offer, um, you can have your subscribers basically involved in a monthly membership whereby, um, you know, you give something in return, whether it's access to more videos um, or products. Um, but you don't have to be with Patreon. So Patreon for me at the moment um, probably wouldn't suit but what I can do 
is ask for donations if anybody does want to donate. Um, another thing to attract subscribers once the ball does eventually start rolling is you can do giveaways, competitions. One of the tarot readers on there gives away $250 every month. So, you know, and that always attracts more and more. Um, and, you know, the tarot readers on there do phenomenally well. Many of them are over 100,000 subscribers. So, you know, people are making a good living. They are, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And uh, so so there's the donation side of things. There's the Patreon yeah. side. Sorry, I've just realised. Um, Joe, Joe Baker, if you're there, are you there, Joe? <laughs> um, I just remembered, I just realised I sent a direct message uh, saying Patreon to Joe. Joe, I didn't mean to send that to you directly. I meant to... <laughs> Just guess it's a funny spelling, so I've just put yes. it in for everybody. <laughs> and the other thing that I also accidentally sent to Joe was Quora, Q-U-O-R-A. Let me just write that. Yeah, Quora. Um, and then we'll just come back on to that yeah. topic of uh, donations, etc. Yeah. So Quora is where you can get, so it's a site where people ask questions and you can answer them and you can establish yourself as an expert there. Now, yeah. the interesting thing about Quora is uh, some of the most active people on there are people like Barack Obama. Um, okay. I mean, really amazing. Didn't know that. Everybody is on uh-huh. Quora asking questions, answering questions. Yeah. Get in there, make it establish yourself as an expert. It's a fantastically good thing yeah. to do. Um, and Reddit, you can do the same thing on Reddit as well. Although yeah. Reddit is a little bit more Wild Westies. So, you know. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, back to Patreon though. Um, that's so, so, so Patreon is a really interesting model if you have time. Mm to uh, actually, what you have to do with Patreon is you have to make sure that you uh, you offer certain things and you have different, you can have, if you want, different levels of membership. So people get more of your time or more input from you uh, for different amounts of money that they pledge every month. Mm. Now, the thing is, of course, it means that if you take that on, you've got to blooming well deliver because it, yep. you know, you know, it would be awfully, awfully embarrassing. Uh, so, you know, if you, if you get if you go down that path, make sure that you actually do mm-hmm. have the, the bandwidth in order to be able to do it. Um, so the other thing, though, of course, is monetizing your YouTube channel. Now, you have to be over 10,000 subscribers and a certain amount of no, sorry, um, over a thousand. A thousand? Is it a thousand? Yeah. Yes, subscribers, but something like, is it 10,000 watch hours? Uh, that's, the, uh, that's the thing. It's, it's, a, it's a number. I think it's about 10,000 watch hours. But of yeah. course, as all social media channels do, they keep changing the goalposts, moving the goalposts. <laughs> so I think that was what it was last time I looked. So we're going to come on to that. But when you do that, you can then start to put adverts either up front in your video or sort mm. of halfway through or, or several times through a longer video and so on. So that's another way to monetize. Now, the point is that generally speaking, monetization on YouTube doesn't really kick in until you've got sort of 100,000 followers uh, subscribed. Mm. So it's not, you know, it, it's great, but it's not going to, you know, it's not it's not going to be a full time job for you and, and uh, you know, keep the wolf from the door and pay the mortgage until you get up to really, really big numbers. But the point is people do it all the time and people grow all the time. Mm. Now, um, to give everybody some examples, one of the people that I that started me off on my YouTube journey is a lady, is a lady called Sunny Leonard Dootsie. Let me just write her name for you. Um, Is that right? Yes, I believe that's I believe that's a correct spelling. Um, even if you put that in, you'll still find her. Yeah. Um, Sonny Lenarduzzi. Do you have you heard of her? Uh, Julie, have you heard of Sonny? Oh, only when you told me about her on Monday. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Yes, right. So, um, yes, that's, of course, we spoke about Sunny. So she was the lady that got me on my journey. She's very, very, a very personable uh, lady. Ex, um, ex tv presenter sports presenter her dad was a, a famous she's canadian he was a famous uh, canadian football player and actually played over here in the uk uh, in various teams over here so the thing is she's and he's now a sports commentator and she's media born and bred this this girl um she's very personable she's got bags of personality and she really knows what she's doing now she's got up to not not millions but she's got up to five hundred thousand followers 
But what Sunny does is she teaches people how to do YouTube. And because of the subject matter, because, you know, she's on the platform teaching people how to use the platform, she's been selling courses on YouTube, um, you know, development and how to grow on YouTube and so on. And she's just hit. Um, she, last year, she did $10 million, US dollars. Um, which just for making videos. Now, I know it sounds just like, ugh, just for making videos. Now she puts a lot of effort into them. She's got a team behind her, of course. And, and of course, she's got a big business, you know, running her courses and her memberships and this, that and the other. But the point is that if you apply yourself to these platforms, you can actually win out. So, you know, mm. it, is, it, it can happen. So, so obviously, Julie, I appreciate that you're very mm. much, at, you know, the, the beginning stages, but mm. the point is, I think your strategy is absolutely spot on. Mm -hmm. um, so, so uh, and I think, yes, I think I I've identified a loophole. So I think before my conversation with you, I'd already kind of like coined a phrase in my head. And that was the 100 Club. And then you told me about Sunny. And then I saw that she has the 100K Club yes. um, because she helps people get to 100,000 subscribers within nine months. Um, but I'd already ascertained that basically in order to get the cogs moving on your channel, really, you just need 100 subscribers. But it seems to be quite difficult even just to get to that number. Um, so, yeah, that's the stumbling block that I've realized. So. I think with Sunny, yeah, with Sunny, I think she says that she had 500 when she first started, which is a luxury. <laughs> Absolutely, that's right. Well, uh, she started off because she was a uh, she was a, a marketing strategist actually, and um, sort of helping helping the companies she was working with um, to sort of promote themselves using various different types of media, um, TV advertising, all sorts of you know, very much playing to her strengths. Mm -hmm. Um, but she started just making these videos as explainers. She didn't set off. She's been on YouTube a long time. She didn't mm. set off uh, to sort of suddenly become YouTube famous. She set off making explainer videos uh, because it was the easiest way for her to get information out to all of her clients really, really quickly and easily. And interestingly enough, actually, so one of my other hobbies that I do, so when I'm not belly dancing, what I'm also doing <laughs> the heart and um i've just recently discovered a fantastic young girl um uh, christy lynn who is learn learn to play the heart with christy lynn she's a uh, she's a kiwi and she's just got bags of personality she's just a sweetheart and she has a natural she comes from the field of occupational therapy which was a really very good way for her to figure out that she could teach people to play the heart she's a, she's a talented harpist but she found ways because of her work of breaking it down so that she could easily show she started off her channel just making videos for people on the low down on the low you know real sort of low-key stuff this is how you do this. This is how you do that. This is how you sit at your heart. This is how, this is the position you need to be in. This is, this is the position you need to be in to start to play the heart, thumbs up. And um, anyway, so it's, it just grew from there with people saying, well, I'd like to learn a particular piece of music. And, and, and anyway, she, long story short, has grown an unbelievable business just by happening to get on to YouTube and start teaching things. So what the point I'm making here is that YouTube is not this big frightening behemoth uh, that you need to get really stressed out about. You mm. just need to get on there and just start. And you will get organic growth. And one of the things we do within the Complementary Medical Association, as you know, we have Promo Fridays. We've got Promo Fridays on the CMA um, Facebook page. And we've also got Promo Fridays um, on the... Uh, oh, yes, in Jamie Goddard masterclasses. So on Fridays, we encourage you under that particular thread, not just randomly on the page, you've, we've got to keep it controlled because otherwise the pages will become unusable. But there we ask you on Fridays to promote yourself. What is it you want to tell the world about? And if you've got a YouTube channel, if you put a new video up, mm -hmm. anything along those lines, please, please put it there and encourage people to visit this, your YouTube or visit mm. your Instagram or whatever it is mm. you want to do. And then they will, you know, ideally watch mm. your video. Sure. And then the important step is that, and we're going to come on to exactly how to do, you know, the, my 13 top steps, which I'll come on to in just a minute, but we've got to get people liking the video 
We've got to get yeah. subscribing to your channel and hitting the little bell icon, which I'll talk to you about all of that in just a moment, the bell icon so they get reminders or notifications when you upload a new video. And they need to comment because what happens is you've got, then you've got all those different forms of engagement, <coughs> excuse me, and what that then means is that your video gets ranked higher. Okay, mm. so um, we'll come on to that in the structuring of videos. So Julie, before I dive into, um, and I will obviously keep coming back to you, but before I start to dive into all my top growth tips, yep. is there anything else that you think that could be useful for people to know? Um, it's probably included in your tips, basically. So I'll see what you say and then yeah. see if I have anything else. So there were some mistakes that I made. Um, I'm using TubeBuddy, but again, because I have 20 spinning plates, I didn't even sit down and see how that was working. Well, how I needed to utilize it, basically. Um, so I didn't have my channel keywords set up until yesterday when Actually, no, I think it was after I spoke to you and I was looking for something. And then on the off chance, I saw that, why is that section blank? <laughs> so then I thought, oh, maybe I'm supposed to put keywords there. So I've done that now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So everybody, so you know, um, that's something called TubeBuddy. Again, I've, I've made a little note in the chat for you. Um, well worth checking out if you're yeah. growing a YouTube channel. Uh, you really can't actually do without it. And top tip is, this is not in my tip, so this is tip 14, but, you know, I'll give it to you up front <laughs> anyway. Uh, so top tip is make sure that you do this on Chrome because uh, you, you can do it in Firefox as well. If you're on a Mac and you're using Safari, um, TubeBuddy doesn't play terribly well with Safari, or I find, oddly enough. Okay. So uh, Chrome is much, much better. If you're doing anything sort of business-wise, this also applies to Facebook as well. If you're looking, I, I know we're digressing, but it's important whilst we're on the topic of, of Chrome to just tell you about other platforms. Uh, if you're looking at running ads for Facebook or doing really anything um, sort of behind the scenes on Facebook, do it in Chrome because it's a far more stable platform for the social media channels, okay? So that's just another little, little bonus side tip. So, um, I think what I'll do is I will get cracking. I'm just going to arrange my screen mm -hmm. so that I can see all of my notes. And I'm going to move us, uh, oh, whoops, us over here. Just bear with me one sec. And I, I know you've been uh, writing questions in the quest in the chat box, everybody. So I will, as always, I'll come back to you to cover the questions off at the end because we may find that I'm covering the questions anyway. So uh, as as we go along, so. Here we go. My top, I start where I started writing today. Uh, the title of this is My Top Five Tips to Grow on YouTube. <laughs> <coughs> Not. <laughs> so here we go. Starting tip number one commit to posting on YouTube multiple times per week. Now, I know that sounds mm. really, really hard, uh, but the point is that if you are intent on growing, it does help you to post, um, you know, multiple times. Now, the advantage is, um, and actually I'm going to share, uh, Megan, I, I'm sure you know that Megan is uh, the CMA's social media guru. She's our, our social strategist and, and does all of the, the, the posts and the video editing and, and everything. She's absolute genius. And uh, anyway, so um, what uh, I was having a meeting with Megan earlier this week, and what we've decided to do is to um, you is to create content and then multi-purpose that content. So it means that we're not creating and recreating and recreating and constantly like Sisyphus, keep pushing that boulder up the hill. You know, it, it's just exhausting. We don't have time for that, especially when we're also looking after patients and running a house and running a business and yada, yada, yada. Mm. So here we go. So what we're doing is we are creating uh, four videos at a time, four YouTube videos at a time. Megan is then going to take a clip of the video. So the videos are for YouTube. And then we're going to take a clip from the video, an interesting clip that sort of illustrates a bit more about and, and is intriguing for people. We're going to pop that onto Instagram and we're also going to pop it into YouTube. Now, there is some thought that duplicated content may not rank, but if you take a clip and put it onto Insta and then you take another slightly different clip, 
you're not then duplicating content and you put that onto Facebook with mm -hmm. links back to where you are actually sending people. Now, mm -hmm. again, top tip, again, bonus tips. It's not in my tips, but a, another thing I need you to know is that um, unless you're running Facebook ads or Instagram ads, your post will be throttled as in it won't be shown to as many people if you just put a link in the description. OK, so if you put a video with a link there, it's not going to it'll be throttled. It won't be shown to as many people as it would if you were to put the video up and then put a link in the comments section. That's a trick that uh, it, it's known by people, but okay. it will mean that you get more exposure um, of your video or whatever content it is. Now, another way that you, that w another thing we're going to be doing, so I got a, a hair in my eye, just get that out, out of the way, that's never good, is it? Um, so another thing that we're going to be doing so that we are not constantly trying to put multiple videos up a week because with the best one in the world, we don't have time to do that because we're busy running the CMA. So the other thing we're going to do is you can actually put um, little posts on YouTube. I don't know if you know that, but you can actually put little little sort of uh, little statements, little, um, I, I suppose, uh, Oh, inspirational quotes, um, a little bit of info about what you're doing or an intriguing photo or something like that, with a little bit of copy underneath. So again, that counts as a post. So again, it's, it really improves your visibility. It improves your searchability and findability. So you're still engaging with the platform. And we're going to later on, I'm going to come on going live on YouTube as well, because that's another big thing that we do need to do. But that's a, that's a topic slightly further down my list. So here we go. Commit to posting to YouTube multiple times a week. So that's video and those little um, in info cards or inspirational quotes or, or what have you. OK, it all counts. So recent reports have shown that YouTube channels uh, that post more than once a week are performing much better and getting more recommended views. What is a recommended view? Do you know when you go to YouTube and you see you're watching a video and then down the side you've got all sorts of other videos that seem to sort of relate more or less, sometimes they're random, but more or less relate to what you're watching and also relate to other things that you may have watched as well. So those that's what's called recommended videos. That's what, what YouTube will serve you because they think it's what you're going to be interested in. So um, what you want your video to do is to come up in other people's recommended views. Um, if possible, post a video to YouTube. If you can, ideally, now we are talking in an ideal world uh, three or more times a week, especially if you're just starting out and trying to build an audience. Keeping a regular schedule with multiple posts per week can quickly raise your channel in the algorithm. Now, as I say, I appreciate you may not be able to do that because it is tricky. When I did Sunny Lenarduzzi's course, um, she was saying her best advice if you're busy running a business and not just wanting to be a YouTuber, make sure you that you post once a week at the very minimum, at the same time, same day, every single week, week in, week out, without fail. Mm -hmm. um, the way that you do that is by batching. I'm going to come on to batching in a bit, but this is what I was saying about earlier on that Megan and I are doing. I'm going to, after this, I'm going to create four videos. Mm -hmm. I'm going to then send them to Megan. She's going to put my intro and my outro and my end um, captions and so on on them, which we'll come on to in a bit and the importance mm -hmm. of those in a little bit. And uh, then once a week, those will go live. Now those, as I say, we have a little video on YouTube, on Facebook, a little video on Instagram. We then create a little, a little side post for Instagram. And also in my newsletter that goes out every Friday without fail, it ties into the topic of the video. And then on my website, on my blog, we also then put the articles. So um, I've got this massive repository of articles. Um, and if any of you do any writing, I know you two will have lists and lists of articles that you've done in the past or if you're online and you find an article you like 
take the article, rewrite it, put it in your own words, and then make a video about it. Use it as a sort of a, a cheat sheet, a, you know, sort of uh, um, mm. tips and hints, you know, that sort of thing to just keep you keep you on track and um, post it mm. up on the wall so that you can actually look at the bullet points and, and, and riff on those themes, as long as it's obviously within your field of expertise. So again, you know, these are the quick and easy, quick and dirty ways of creating content. But if you've got articles, as I have, I've got a gazillion, million, squillion articles, then a lot of those I can repurpose and rewrite. I can't just take my Natural Health magazine articles or CMA website articles because obviously they're all under copyright. But what I can do is I can rewrite those for my blog. Um, and so they also, so that way I'm getting mm. what's the blog, YouTube, uh, so, so you two YouTubes, uh, two Facebooks, another Facebook, um, and another Facebook. So I'm getting about eight, I think I'm getting about eight different vi uh, views, if you like, sort of opportunities to view mm. what I'm doing across different platforms per week. That's a lot. That's an awful lot of visibility. So I suggest you do it. And it's very easy because all you're doing is driving it from creating one piece of content. Am I making sense so far? Or is this all getting a bit convoluted? Because I can I can break it down for you again, if, if need be. Um, right. OK, so let's have a little look. Uh, right. Creating a ton of content in the beginning on similar topics will help your channel perform well in the algorithm. Um, it will also create a library of content that will usher viewers from one video to another, boosting your watch time and giving them a reason to subscribe. Now, with monetization on YouTube, as we said earlier, it's really, really hangs on watch time because, again, they're really smart. Their algorithms are super smart. So what actually happens is that if they see that you're making videos that people watch for two seconds and then go, Ugh, this isn't, in, you know, I'm not interested in this at all. Uh, people will just navigate away and go and watch something else. If people are sticking mm. with your videos, then you're, you're, you're golden. Now, there's a structure for getting people to actually stick with your videos. What you do is you start the video by saying, hello, everybody, greeting them. Um, maybe acknowledging if you've got followers that you know happen to be in different uh, time zones, you know, say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and 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 that. So a nice warm welcome. You tell them right up front what you're going to be talking about today. You uh, tell them what they're going to learn in this video. And then you tell them, you know, it, let's say it's uh, my top three tips to do X, Y, Z. And then the next thing you've got to do without fail is say, and stick with me right to the end because I have a bonus tip that will enable you to blah, 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 okay? Mm -hmm. That means that people know that they've got to stay on the video, getting therefore getting your watch time up. That is mm -hmm. crucial. That's one of the most yeah. important things that you can do. I think you're doing that, aren't you, Julie? I didn't say it, <laughs> but I, I will. I will in the next. <laughs> do it. Yes. You, yes. Yeah. So give people a reason to stick with yeah. you. So, for example, I made a video recently. I'm doing video, a video series on my morning routine that enables me to be super productive throughout the day. And um, I did a video on taking cold showers, like the Wim Hof method. And uh, one of the things I had to say because it was crucial is, and stick with me right to the very end, because there are certain safety issues you absolutely must know about, because you can't just start taking cold showers willy nilly, because there are, you know, really, really important safety issues mm. that you must find out about and you must adhere to. So again, you see that gives people a very, very good reason for actually sticking with the, with, with the video. Um, and then the next thing you do is you say, and it would help me immensely if you could remember to subscribe to my channel by hitting the little red button at the side and remember to hit the little bell icon because I upload a lot of content and I don't want you to miss out. Now, people... You know, we've got this thing called FOMO, fear of missing out, and people hate the thought of missing out. It, you know, it, it pings our dopamine and we get really, really anxious if we think we're going to miss out on something. So, you know, we are we are leveraging neurotransmitters. We are we are leveraging uh, brain chemistry by saying things like that. Um, it sounds horribly manipulative, but it's not when you think that you're bringing useful, important information to people that's going to help them so please don't ever think that this is manipulative because it's really not okay so that's that's the structure so mm. intro get them to stick with it 
and then make sure they hit the like, the subscribe, and please leave me a comment. And also things like, you know, uh, at the end, for example, again, leave me a comment when your end um, screens are coming up. Um, mm. You know, let me know what else I can make for you. What other topics do you want me to cover? So it's all about asking them. It's about engaging with them. Always mm. ask them, are they going to try your tips? This is another thing. Um, Julie, where you may be not getting as much engagement, mm. maybe because I don't know if you're asking people if they're going to try your tips or have they tried your tips, how have they got on with them? If you can do that, you'll start to get engagement. People will start writing to you. I will. Uh, the first three that I've done, that was just mainly explaining what healing is. So it wasn't really a tip for them, but with ones that I need to create, I'll make a note of that. Yes, please do. It'll, yeah. it, will, it will definitely grow your engagement. Sure. And the thing is, everybody, when you start, when when um, YouTube starts to see your engagement. Now, another important thing about engagement is that you've got to make sure that you have your YouTube notifications switched on, which is why, mm. again, it's important to use Chrome because the notifications tend to come through Chrome. Uh, mm. So make sure you've got your notifications switched on for YouTube for comments on your channel because as soon as somebody makes a comment on your channel you've got to get back to them and respond to that comment by liking yeah. their comment by responding to their comment and if it's a particularly lovely comment pin it also when you put a video up you can actually comment on your video underneath your video make sure you put a comment on your video again because it's all about speed and velocity so mm. with the way the youtube the, the youtube algorithm views a video is it looks at the the length it looks at the number of views obviously and the watch time but also it looks at velocity as in how quickly mm. are people hitting that video so as soon as you put mm. a video up you've got to post that you've put a video up on all of your socials absolutely crucial it must be done within five minutes or so so that then will start to get people coming over to your video watching it and commenting on it and then you comment in turn and you like and pin videos and so on that qualifies as velocity and that's something that will dramatically make a huge difference to to what your you know to, to the way that your videos are ranking okay so um Next tip, next tip, tip number two, uh, develop a sustainable video production workflow. This is what I was talking about with batching. You may be making Oscar worthy short films and videos, but if it takes you six months to make a video, that's not gonna work, is it? I think we all know that. Honestly, and this was my downfall at the beginning because I was thinking, oh, I don't like the way I look on video. Oh, I don't like the way I sound on video. Oh my gosh, it looks really amateurish. Oh, uh, 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 and really just like beating myself up about it. But the problem is if you're a dyed in the wool perfectionist, I'm a recovering perfectionist as I'm sure many of us are, done is better than procrastinating, okay? Just get it done and mm. out there and truthfully your videos will improve over time sunny lena dootsy i keep coming back to her because she's such a good example she actually has on her channel some of her first videos my goodness they look different um, from from what it looked like when she was starting from how she is now i mean now she's got massive production values and studios and outside mm. broadcasts and this and this and this and you know it's totally different she even looks different because she styles herself differently because she's watched herself and she's taken sort of hints from herself to oh what if I did my hair like this or if I you know if I maybe got some different lighting and so on um and you know your con it's a learning process it really mm. is never ever worry about how you come across um mm. it's not a beauty contest it's just about being somebody who's giving useful <laughs> valuable information mm. that's what YouTube is yes Danny, just just on yeah. that note um obviously we always want it to look as good as possible but I've noticed that even with watching the tarot videos, there's one reader, I think she calls herself the Real Housewives of Tarot. Um, basically, her videos are as rough as anything. She's mainly sat on her bed on the duvet, kids screaming in the background. Um, she's got the phone camera just vertical. So it's as basic as anything. And she's over 100,000 subscribers. There you go. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's exactly it. Because also there's a hell of a lot to be said for being real and being absolutely just yourself. And people appreciate that. You know, the, yeah. I, think, I think there's a uh, I, I think there's a bit of a backlash because there's so much, you know, we see so much in the media, don't we, with airbrushing and filters and this and this and this. 
and I think actually people really cherish mm. uh, genuine realness. So mm. thank you for that, Julie. That's yeah. a really, really useful comment. Yeah. Also with the tarot readers, half of them don't reveal their face. All you see is the hands and the cards. You don't see them. Oh, wow. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. And they're making yeah. good money. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Fantastic. Thank you. That's brilliant. Um, so, so as I say, making a workflow. So, you know, you really, what I would suggest to you is pick a day, one day of the week and say, this is my day for making videos. Put it in your diary. You know, if you don't diary it, it's not going to get done, is it? So make a, a day for making videos. And you will speed up. Honestly, mm. you truly, truly will. Um, when I first started doing videos, I thought they had to be really fancy with all captions and, and cuts and, and zoom in and zoom out and background music and so on. And I was sending my videos off uh, to, to a video editing company. And um, honestly, I was spending about 400 uh, US dollars a month, more, oh. more even. Um, and actually, you know what? I don't do that now. I do not edit. Mm. Um, I literally cut the front off where I'm sort of scrabbling, trying to find the on button. And Megan cuts the end off where I'm scrabbling, trying to find the off button. <laughs> But that's it. It's good and done. And we're not, you know, we're not spending time and gazillions of dollars mm. uh, because it's all priced in dollars uh, doing all of that stuff. So um, one of my top tips is set up a video studio. Now, on the CMA YouTube channel, we have got a, a really I'm going to sound ever so arrogant now, but it is a good video uh, that I did for you, which is on how to set up your, uh, your, your self-fulfilling, uh, how to make good videos. So how to make good Zooms, how to make good YouTubes and so on. And I showed you around my little office. I've, I've got a different office now, but I've shown you how I set my lights up. I show you how I set the, the computer up. I show you where I sit in relation to the computer. I show you how to work the lights and all the rest of it. Um, I will, when I eventually get I'm able to get back to the Berkshire studio, I will show you how I set my green screen up because that's actually quite a handy thing to have. And I'm going to get more fancy with my green screen at some point in the future when I have time. But, you know, it, there's a great video there. I'm not going to go into setting things, you know, setting your studio up today because we've already got that content on YouTube for you. So, um, right. So begin tip three, begin each video with an interesting hook. Um, how you hook video viewers depends on you and your content. Um, if a video features any kind of show and tell, show the end result first. Um, a stunning result makes people more interested to see how you achieved it. it that's a really good one for um, obviously DIY and makeover videos. But if you have, a, you know, if, if you're working, perhaps, may, perhaps maybe you're telling a story about a patient, you know, this is my patient. This is what she looks like, la 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 la, and this is where we started off, you know. And and if you have permission, I mean, it's like a video to, uh, testimonial. If you have permission to use that sort of content, hallelujah, that is golden. Um, people love to see transformations. Uh, so so do actually take a look. And telling stories is important as well. There's a great book that I recommend that you get. It's called Wired for Story, The Writer's Guide to Using Brain Science to Hook Readers from the Very First Sentence. Um, I will put that in. It's by a lady called uh, Dr. Lisa Cron. She's a uh, neuroscientist. And I'm going to just, sorry, let me move this over here. Uh, no, I don't want to send that to you, Sandy. Uh, hmm. Let me send this to everybody. Right. Okay. There we go. There we go. That's the book. Um, so when you start with a story, people will naturally want to stick around to see what happens. Plus, personal stories endear the presenter to the viewer and can often provide a helpful seed to more complicated ideas. Now, I tell stories, for example, uh, with my morning routine, which is getting quite a lot of engagement on YouTube, uh, because people love morning routines. All of the, you know, the biohackers are doing, you know, and, and they're all these really like macho guys, you know, yeah, I get up at four o'clock in the morning and I, and I do my meditation meditation and I drink my bulletproof coffee and I do this and I don't do any of that stuff you know and I, I do things in a very different way it's a lot more gentle it's a lot more sustainable and you know I'm not trying to prove my machismo in any way shape or form but it's a system that works for me and I'm sharing it because I think it might be useful for people but people like personal stories they like to know they like to know about the challenges that you've been through in life and how you've solved those challenges um, so don't ever feel that you are 
uh, oversharing or overexposing yourself. Um, you know, just just use your mm. your best judgment, be, but be real. I mean, that's the, the most important thing. Um, now, the, the next thing that I want you to do is to think about keeping titles and opening credits short. Really, you've got to, uh, when you start putting up videos, by all means, put up some videos and then look at them, analyze them and time them. If you don't start your point, your teaching within 20 seconds, you're going to run the risk of losing people. So please, 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 you know, I've got a five second sting, which is like some sort of red kind of lovely sort of uh, smoky swirly stuff that then kind of goes choo, 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 then it goes Jane Goddard. Um, so that's that's what we do at the beginning and the end. So it's nice to have that because it gives you brand identity. So it's good to have a brand ident, but keep it really short and then launch into your topic. Tell them what they're going to learn. Mm. Tell them to stick with you and so on. That's crucial. OK, otherwise you'll lose people. Um, now, the next thing you do is to add end screens to promote your video channel or your website or your Instagram or wherever you want to take people. Um, end screens are interactive. In, oh, that's easy for you to say. Interactive graphics that link to another video playlist or channel or web page or prompt somebody to subscribe to your channel. As the feature suggests, you can add end screens only in the last 20 seconds of your video so you've got to look at where you plan to have them now one important trick is that you don't just go to a blank screen and put up an end screen what you do is you've got to keep talking and you'll have your little end screen subscribe or you have a little thing saying next video or what have you but you're talking you're doing your outro and so on one of the best uses of extending your video because you want people to be with you on your video as long as possible. So even if the main body of your video is finished, keep your keep something running. So perhaps like a nice background with perhaps your name on it, but keep your voice over going. The best person is Sarah Millican. You know the comedian Sarah Millican? Go and look at some of her videos, A, because she's hysterically funny, and B, because look at her, the way she handles the end screen. She actually does a little talk at the end saying, thank you so much for being, you know, she's got that sort of really <laughs> cute, like, you know, <laughs> um, Geordie accent, hasn't she? And thank you so much for being with me. And it really means the world to me. And, and um, this is what I'm doing next. And this is, you know, what I'm doing. I've got a book coming out and blah, blah. And, you know, and it really, you know, I really do appreciate you being here. And, you know, I, she does it so well. She's just got that beautiful little light touch that just makes you feel she actually really cares whether or not you stick with her and subscribe. She asks you to subscribe. She reminds you to hit the little bell icon. She does all that stuff. But because it's Sarah Millican, you know, you just, you've, you're already in love with her anyway. So you, you, want to, you just want more Sarah. And that's how she uses that. So she's getting a, another good 10 seconds of watch time and it all mounts up. So that's really important for you. Um, so yeah, now the other thing is, oh yes, um, you can end, end, extend your session length with a video or a playlist end screen. Playlists are really important. Playlists are um, where you have various videos in a, a, a stream of videos. So literally somebody can click on the first video and then your next video will autoplay and the next video will autoplay. So they can binge you. Um, as we know from things like Netflix and, and so on, it's bingeable content. Bingeability is absolutely crucial. The person you need to go and look at for bingeability is Dr. Michael Greger. Um, a, he's a brilliant doctor, but Michael does cliffhangers. It is so clever. And I mean, I, I've been trying to do them and I cannot, I need to, I need to study him further. But what Michael does is he will talk about, let's say he'll talk about intermittent fasting. And then he'll say something like, now intermittent fasting, obviously you've learned today is really, really great. His videos are short. It's really great for this reason, this reason, this, as we've discovered. Um, however, there's one thing you need to be aware of that could possibly scupper all your intermittent fasting efforts. But I'll come on to that in the next video. And you're going, ah! and it's like, you know, it's like those old cowboy films where the guy's hanging off the edge, literally a cliffhanger. And so, you know, that's how Michael does it. Michael Greger and 
boy, oh boy, you you hit that next video like nobody's business. <laughs> and he is he's the master. He he wrote um, How Not to Die and the How Not to Die cookbook and all of all of those. See, that's Dr. Michael Greger. I'm sure you all know of him. Um, so yeah, so that's bingeability and leaving. So so for example, uh, I've been doing that with the morning routine. So I have been doing it to a certain extent, but I know I could improve it dramatically, which are things like, um, so I, I've talked about taking cold showers. Now, the next part of my morning routine is when I make my cup of oolong tea. And there's a reason I drink oolong tea rather than any other kind of tea in the morning before I do my meditation. Visit the next video and I'll tell you exactly what that's all about because it's really intriguing. So it's a little bit of a cliffhanger, not as good as Michael's, but I'm, I'm, I'm learning, you know, I'm getting there as well. Then we've got thumbnails. Um, Ah, thumbnails are really important. The thumbnail is the little picture people see before they actually hit your video. Your thumbnail has to be instantaneously identifiable as being you. You need a good picture of you and you need really readable text. When I first started doing my channel, uh, my thumbnails are useless because the, the copy was completely unreadable. I had some fancy, nice, posh font and you couldn't read it at 10 paces. You've really, with, with, with YouTube, you've got a really it's got to be in your face. I mean, that's it. End of story. Because you're competing with so many other videos. You've got to have something in there, a, a title that grabs people's attention immediately. And then a subtitle. And if they've looked at the title, they like the title, they'll then go on to read the subtitle. Is this something I'm interested in? Your subtitle also has to speak to them and be really uh, a good way of explaining things. Um, mm. So, right, I'm just going to check and check my notes. Bear with me one sec. Yeah. Uh, yes. Ah, oh, that's right. Yes. I was going to say my, in my notes, I said um, the thumbnail has to be really relevant to the video's content. I think that sort of goes without saying don't do clickbait, please, whatever you do. Don't put some tacky sort of, I, I don't think anybody here would, but you know, you see these really tacky clickbait things that you won't believe what happened next and all of that sort of thing. Everybody's so over that. It's just like, oh, please, you know, really. So just make sure that your, 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 your title of your thumbnail is really appropriate for your content, it matches your content. Um, there's no reason why you shouldn't do some sort of like, uh, like a face like, like that, if it's something you've just discovered, like, wow, I did not know this, you know, or that sort of thing, you know, just to give yourself, you know, you're not just a talking head, you've got personality. So that sort of thing really does help. But, you know, or you can be looking sideways or, you know, just making things, you know, changing things up a little bit, that's absolutely fine. Um, but, you know, it's always good because again, from a neurological perspective, always making one, uh, viewers wonder what's coming next. So try to tell a story with your, with your thumbnails, show an image that sets up or teases a situation Situation that you'll be talking about. Um, cre creating a consistent look and feel is very, very important. Um, so my brand colors for my personal brand are a really, really bright, vibrant green, uh, sort of luscious green springtime leaves and pink. And so uh, all of my YouTube branding is it's brand cohesive, much as Julie has done with, with her branding. Please go and look at her branding because it's exceptionally well done. Mm -hmm. um, so please make sure you've got consistency across your brands. Um, then with, uh, with anything that you're doing, bring emotion into it. Um, excitement is the emotion that people respond to most. When we see somebody showing enthusiasm, it makes us want to know why they're excited and maybe join in. So we too will feel excited. Nothing sells enjoyment more than the eyes. So show an excited face and focus on the eyes. Your video will get a much, much higher response. Um, Replicate topics from high performing videos, either your own high performing videos or do yourself a big favor and go and have a look at other people that you like and admire who are doing the same sort of topic as you are and go and look at their top performing videos. What is it they're doing? Analyze that. Maybe look at their keywords. Again, if you get Tube Buddy, um, you can actually go in and look at their keywords and you can maybe replicate some of those keywords. Um, there is a bit of an art and a science to this, and I'm not going to go into um, search terms and the algorithms and 
and, and clicks and, and, and so on, because that is a course in and of itself. I'd be doing you a disservice trying to just even scratch the surface on that. But if you get TubeBuddy, they have a lot of videos where you can actually learn exactly how to work out what's working for other people and the kind of search terms that you can use or tagging that you can use that will actually enable you to climb the algorithm rankings. Janie, um, what I, sorry, yes. Janie, what I noticed yes. yesterday, that's okay, what I noticed yesterday after somebody mentioned that I probably didn't have my SEO set up correctly, um, I went to um, my YouTube and because TubeBuddy's installed within your YouTube um, and then I, you know, just looked at the drop down. I can't remember the exact name, but it's SEO something. And I clicked on that. And basically, if you set your video video up like that from the offset, um, basically, it will help you choose the best title. So it will, for example, if you put, put in healing, um, it will then bring up suggestions for you based on the top videos that are getting millions of views. And it will give you also the best keywords to use. That's right. Absolutely. There is a, there's an art, it's an art and a science keyword. Yeah. So yes, thank you very much, Julie. That's really okay. helpful. Great. So the next thing we need to do is to uh, create longer videos to improve watch times. So it's fine to have short, short and sweet videos. They are just fine. But the sweet spot at the moment, the research indicates is between seven to 15 minutes. Some of my videos are 20 minutes long, um, some are even longer. Uh, so, you know, it just depends on what what you're talking about. Um, if you've got a compelling enough story, people will stay with you. A lot of the tarot mm. card readers, I'm sure your degree, Julie, are actually putting out some quite long videos. An um, hour. Yeah, yeah, an hour. Absolutely. Yes, uh, they are. And people are sticking with them. You know, this yeah. is compelling content because people are very, very interested in, in mm. all of those sorts of topics. But whatever it is that you're, you're doing, you know that people will be interested in your topic because you've clearly explained what it is right from the very get go. Mm. So people will stick with you. Um, then the next trick that you can do is to go live on YouTube. Now, this is daunting. I know it's daunting because, you know, you're putting yourself out there, you're going live and gosh, you know, I'm putting myself out into the world. I don't know who's watching me. I don't know if anybody's watching me. It's all very, very intriguing and, and really quite, uh, quite a scary concept. But take the plunge because once you've done it, it's then easy enough to do. So that's absolutely fine. Live streaming on YouTube is a great way to pump out content without spending a ton of time on it. Um, it it's definitely a learning curve, but once you've mastered the format, a live video is the easiest way to create video content. So put a toe in the water and, you know, if you want to speak to me, I'm more than happy to just give you, you know, sort of some, some encouragement and, and uh, be your live buddy if, if you wanted me to do that. I'm more than happy to help out with that. Um, now, the next thing we need to do, because I am aware of the time, um, develop videos as a series. Nothing increases watch time like binge watching, as we said earlier. Ultimately, what you want to create is a lean back experience for your videos, your viewers, so that they can just go seamlessly from one video to the next video. Series playlists are one of the best ways to do this and are quite underutilized on YouTube. Learn to use them. Um, it's pretty easy. It's all very self-explanatory. Once you actually start to get your head around YouTube, you'll actually see, oh, yes, so that's there. And, oh, that's there. Oh, that's actually pretty easy, isn't it? So um, you can develop a series based on content that's performed well, for example. Um, for example, many successful YouTube channels have more than one series, uh, each with which has a special topic focus and different thumbnail image style. So, for example, on my YouTube, um, what we've got is I've got COVID videos where I interviewed lots of different experts for their opinions on, on COVID. Um, I've got uh, topics on health and well-being under the Rewind Your Body Clock thing that ties in with my latest book and various other bits and pieces. So... You know, so, so those are those are some, some ideas on the CMA website. We've got all of these, you know, Zoom tutorials. And in due course, we're just we're launching a new initiative, which is whereby um, I am going to be offering you guys interviews. So what we're doing is with practitioners, training schools, clinics, other association members and, and so on and so forth. 
you're going to have the opportunity for me to interview you and we'll create a video together which you can then use on your YouTube channel, on your website. Um, we will also post it on, on the CMA uh, YouTube channel. And so we're going to be building up this great repository of live videos with our members. So what it does is it really underscores your involvement with the CMA, the fact that you're a member, the fact that you know, you've got this absolute dedication to professionalism and excellence and so on by being a member of the CMA and it will dramatically improve not just your exposure and get you out in front of more people that you wouldn't necessarily have been in front of previously but also give you really good content uh, for your own use as well so we're going to be letting you know about that uh, we've just uh, just about finishing off the copy on the document for that so we'll be letting you have that next week um so let's have a little look. Oh yes, now, gosh, we're always wrong. Uh, tip 13, gosh, we've been through a lot of tips today. Collaborate with other YouTubers. This is a very, very useful one. Uh, collaborations are videos that are shared among multiple content creators and are one of the most effective ways to expand your audience on YouTube. So for example, one of the things that gave me a massive leg up on YouTube was when I did an interview with a lady called Chef AJ. Chef AJ mm -hmm. does several videos a day. This is the most extraordinary woman. She really is a full to full on YouTuber. Um, and uh, so she's a chef, she's a, a healthy chef and she promotes a uh, vegan salt oil and sugar free, well, a diet free of an added refined salt oil and sugar, an SOS free diet. And uh, anyway, she invited me onto her channel and I did an interview with her and I my, my channel subscriptions increased exponentially. It was one of the best things I ever did. I also did an interview when my last book came out with a lady called Kim Constable, who's the sculpted vegan. She's a bodybuilder, unbelievably successful woman who has got just a gazillion uh, followers. And again, because I did an interview with her, her audience saw me and they then obviously, you know, just kind of jumped on, on, on ship with me as well. And obviously I'm in a position now to do that with you guys. So, you know, you can use my channel to collaborate if you want to start growing your channel. So Julie and I are going to be doing a, a video um, mm -hmm. whenever, whenever Julie, we can get our diaries corner okay. <laughs> next week. Um, and uh, yeah, so co collaborations, everybody. It mm. is the way to go. Ideally, um, you know, if you can get somebody who's like, super famous and, and you can get on with them, a Tim Ferriss or somebody, well, good for you fantastic do it but you may find it easier to go for somebody who's got 5,000 followers 6,000 10,000 that sort of level to begin with and you'll find that you'll grow your channel it'll start growing and growing and growing and then you'll find that you'll you know really it, the ball starts rolling and it's like anything isn't it it's sort of like an avalanche mm -hmm. effect so you get your first hundred viewers and then it's easier to get to 500 then it's easier to get to, to a thousand it's easier to get to 10,000 so mm -hmm. you know it does happen and it will happen but you've just got to be patient so so um, we've got a question. I'm going to go through the questions in the chat box. Um, I am aware that of the time, so I, I do appreciate it. If you have to dash off, that's fine. Remember, this is always recorded. And uh, right, uh, let's have a look. Um, Nadi uh, N uh, sorry, Nina wrote in, she said, I'd love to understand how YouTube works in relation to monetizing free content. By that, I mean, I've heard that for every thousand views or something like that, YouTube pays you by the amount of people that have subscribed. I really have no idea how this works. All input welcome. Well, Nina, actually, we covered it sort of earlier on. It's not a thousand subscribers. It's actually, um, they keep changing the goalposts. And uh, so at the, I think the last time I looked, it's something like uh, 10,000 watch hours, but that I may be wrong about that. Um, it, they may have changed it yet again. Um, so no, you've got to get substantial numbers of viewers and I think uh, that I I think I last time I looked at monetizing my channel I think I was just short of the um, amount of uh, view hours and I think I was also mm. just slightly short of the monetizing um, level I think I've got nearly 7,000 uh, 8,000 something like that it, 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 it bubbles up and down but um, yeah so and I need to put a bit more effort into uh, expanding uh, my personal YouTube I've been putting much more effort into the CMA YouTube uh, but I need to get back on mine and, and get a bit more uh, a bit more dedicated to it 
but as I say, Megan and I now have a, a batching strategy, which is going to make it a lot easier for us to put more of my personal uh, videos up and so mm. on. So let me just go through. Um, let's have a little look at hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. That's good, 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 good. Any questions? Um, uh, Sandy says, can we have a list of different names of web pages when you get them? Would be really helpful. Um, I don't know what you mean, Sandy. Can we have a list of the different names of web pages when you get them? I, I'm sorry, I, I don't know. Don't know what you mean by that. Can you elaborate, please? Um, I wrote uh, the various things that we've been speaking about. Patreon, P A T R E O N. It's in the notes. Quora. That's so. Patreon is the platform where people can become your patrons if you're going mm -hmm. to be reliably and regularly making content if you don't have time don't do it uh, <laughs> just be ridiculously stressful um, Quora is that platform that we spoke about where you can become a really established expert very very quickly um, Sonny Lenarduzzi is the lady to check out for YouTube growth uh, lessons now, Sonny's mentor is a guy called Sean Cannell, S-E-A-N, Cannell, C-A-N-N-E-L-L. -L. He is fabulous and he just gives away so much content on how to grow a YouTube channel. So please check Sean out because he tells you everything and everything and everything that you could ever want to know. Uh, then we spoke about TubeBuddy, very, very important. If you're serious about growing your channel, you must subscribe to TubeBuddy. It does mm -hmm. have a small cost. It's not expensive. Can you, um, Julie, can you remember how much TubeBuddy costs? Uh, well, they have a free version, um, but, right. for the, but for the paid version, um, I think maybe around 10 pounds a month, however, I got a discount. I should remember because it was only three weeks ago. I think I'm paying five pounds a month for three months. They, yes, they do all sorts of discounts. All yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, I knew it was really, it's really low cost. And, and yeah. it's serious about growing your channel. You need the paid version, but it's it's, it's peanuts. For, for what yeah. you need, it's absolutely peanuts. Uh, right. Oh, Sandy says, what were the three items on YouTube? Little Bell, Comet. Ah, okay, Sandy. So, thank, good question. Thank you very much. Uh, the three items on YouTube that you need to, t well, it's actually four things that you need to tell people to do. Hit the subscribe button. Now, mm -hmm. An interesting thing that somebody said to me was, um, does it cost money to subscribe to a channel? And you know what? That never even occurred to me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I mean, I, I just never even thought that somebody might even think that. But, you know, that's really a very, very interesting question. No, it doesn't cost any money. So you make a point of that. Say, click the subscribe button. It's the red button just at the side of this video. It won't cost you any money to do so. And when you do that, a little bell icon will come up. If you click that bell, you'll make sure that you get a notification every time I upload a new video. And that way you'll never miss out on any of this valuable content. So that's the second thing. The third thing is ask them to like the video because it, and explain why. Explain, please, if you found this useful, please like this video because it really helps me with visibility and it helps me get the video to rank so that other people can benefit from it as well. Just be real. I mean, don't, you know, you're not, you're not pulling wool over anybody's eyes. And then finally, the fourth thing is, and please let me know your comments. Let me know if there are any other kinds of videos that you'd like me to make for you. I want to make the most uh, useful content uh, that I possibly can. I want to make sure it's useful for you. Also, this is a great platform platform for us to be able to have conversations so if you've got any questions for me drop them in the notes and I'll definitely get straight back to you so those are the four things thank you Sandy that's a great question um right okay uh let me have a little look. Is there an optimum time length for a video? If too long, it put people off too short. It depends on the content. You know, Wendy, um, it depends entirely on what you're talking about. If you are making a very, very short topic, but you're waffling on um, and not giving value for money, then yeah, that video is too long. If you're making a really short video um, on, on a topic that really does deserve a deep dive, then you're not really helping people either. So when you think about making your video, think about the sort of length that it needs to be and what you can do to get your point across as quickly as possible so you're not wasting anybody's time. So, you know, please honour the fact that they are spending their time, as I do with, with all of you watching, um, you know, honour the fact that people are giving up their valuable time to be with you. So damn well make sure you're, you're delivering good value. Mm. Um, 
Okay, Sandy says authenticity is always good. Absolutely, it truly is. Uh, Tony says, is there any day or time that is more advantageous to add videos? Um, no, it, there isn't really, because don't forget, um, I mean, yes, yes and no, yes and no, I guess, yes, in a way. Um, you can tell on TubeBuddy uh, when your audience is mostly online. So you, you can tell from that. But um, there's also an element of training your audience. So, for example, if you go to my, uh, if you go to Jenny Goddard, uh, the, the Jenny Goddard YouTube channel, if you look at my header, if you look at it on a computer, you'll see my header. It says new videos every Thursday in, in a red box. And that's when I upload my new videos every Thursday without fail. Um, people become used to that. And it then is, you know, pe people know to look out for it, for it. And you, you will sort of be able to train them to actually do that. Um, Mel says, Nadine Baggett, beauty journalist, and Penny Price of Penny Price Aromatherapy, worth a look, really short, informative videos. Thank you. This is really great. Um, um, Penny and their fun, informative, straight to camera type from uh, Nadine, really useful. Thank you. We will go and okay. check those out. Yeah, that's really helpful. Thank you. Good. Uh, right. Oh, yes. I said about Wired for Story. Excellent book. Um, if you're into neuroscience, uh, and who isn't into neuroscience? Come on, everybody. <laughs> neuroscience. Uh, right. OK. Uh, la, 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 la. Right. Um, Mel says, thank you, Jane. You're always such a positive vibe. Good luck, Julie. Have to jump out now. Thank you very much for a useful. Thank you so <laughs> much. That's really lovely, Mel. Really, really appreciate it. Debbie says, thank you, Janie and everyone. Uh, Joe says, great class as always. Bruno says, thank you for another amazing session. Good luck, Julie. And thank you thank for you. your advice. Great weekend, everybody. Mm -hmm. Ciao for now. Ciao, Bruna. And uh, Tony says, thanks for answering my question. Thank you so much, everybody. Julie, is there anything you can think of that uh, you would like to add in closing? Uh, I think you've covered everything, um, but with the last question that you answered, um, you're right, just train your viewers to expect the video at certain times. Um, but I was looking at Nick Nimmin, um, one of his videos yesterday, and basically you can tailor it around your analytics and the demographics of um, what countries are basically watching your video most. So maybe if it's in America, um, you can schedule your videos to you know, um, go live at, you know, maybe five hours behind. So yeah, yes. they're in New York. Yeah. So yeah. you can tailor it that way. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, that's Nick Nimmin. I put um, his name, um, Nick, then N-I-M-M-I-N. Yes. He is so useful, isn't he, Julie? Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's amazing. Again, he really gives incredibly generously on exactly how to grow your channel. So he's another person I strongly yeah. suggest you follow. He's absolutely fabulous. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Geraldine says, such help. Thank you, session. Thank you, Julie and Jane. Thank you. And Roberta. Roberta, thank you so much for being in with us and, uh, and looking after everybody. Uh, everybody, it's been an amazing session. Julie, you are just such a superstar and I know that we can't wait to watch your growth and uh, thank you I, I know you're going to be a YouTube star there's just no two ways about it you've got it all going for you and, and I've got a lot of work to do <laughs> we, are, we all do we all do it's yeah. not easy it's not easy but it's doable this is the thing yeah. everybody. it's totally doable so we're all going to lift each other up and uh, we will do like chains and, and follow chains and so on so I'm going to get that set up cool. uh, in the um, master classes group and also in the CMA uh, Facebook on the Facebook page, CMA Facebook page. And then that way we can all do these sort of like and subscribe and comment. Yeah. Remember, like, subscribe, um, comment, comment, and hit the bell. bell. Okay? <laughs> Four things must you do. That's it, everybody. Yay. Lots of love to you all. Thank you, Jenny. Thank Thanks, you. Roberta. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Lots of love. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>